Media art basically started uh, 500 years ago when Alberti wrote on painting and said that a painting is uh, either is lines and colors organized into a, an image. And um, basically this has been going on for, for 400 years. You know, real art is like painting and sculpture. I concentrate on painting. It took 400 years till uh, Kandinsky came and said, no, 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 wait a minute. We are not talking about lines that make forms and then we put in the color. We're talking about color as a, a, f a force that's on the image plane and we're talking about lines as another element. They are not, line is not meant to limit forms, it's just one of the elements. This liberated art completely because now, from now on lines were considered to be basically the elements that brought in time into the image. Because if you draw a line on a picture plane and you as a viewer, you have to follow the line with your eyes. It takes a while, you know, to go from the left to right, up, etc. It brings in time into the image. So basically, painting from the moment that it became abstract, from Kandinsky, Clay, Mondrian, it became time-based. Exactly as media art is time-based. Basically, lots of media art from nowadays, electronic art, whatever you like to call it, I prefer the term interactive art because it describes the sort of agency that the art allows. So let's say that interactive art is all about, you know, how to bring in time into the artwork. And you do it, if you work with images, through lines. Whether it's on a screen or on a painting isn't really uh, different. So works of modern works of art, contemporary works of art, such as Esther Polak's Amsterdam Real Time or the works of Nobotic Research, is also, lots of it is about lines being drawn on planes in time. That's one of the elements. Another element that was brought in at the beginning of the 20th century is Mondrian, who says, you know, okay, so painting is not about forms with lines around them, it's about colors and lines. So basically, let's reduce all the colors to red, yellow, and blue, and then we have some white and black and gray to complement it, and there are lines on the plane, you know, and he puts them just like this or that, horizontal and vertical. He says, what is art about? Well, it's about the relationships between these different elements that form a force field that is the painting. Well, this goes directly to most of the interactive art that we have nowadays, which is all about relationships, you know. It doesn't really matter what you're doing. The content isn't really interesting. What it's about is the relationships that are created, the connectivity, as it is called, well, there are lots of terms for it, that somehow organize it into something different, where you, you know, and where through the interaction that is made possible through the relations, there emerges something else. In Mondrian paintings, there emerges some sort of spiritual experience that he called the abstract. And in interactive art, there emerges something that we could call interactivity, love, real life, or whatever you like to call it. What is interactive art? Next question. Well, I found a, a, a painting by Robert Rauschenberg from 1961 called Black Market, which is, as, I, as far as I know, the first interactive artwork. But he made a painting, and he, he, he draws a, he, there's a sort of rope getting out to a trunk, and he, you were supposed to, to, put, to get things out of the trunk and put new things in, and then draw on the painting what you've done, right? It was a very nice idea, but it didn't work because everybody thought, wait a minute, I can take along a real Robert Rauschenberg home. So the, the thing was stolen in, in 10 minutes, basically. Which shows that if you do interactive art, you shouldn't work with valuable objects. You know, the interactive art work, the relational object, as I call it, shouldn't have any value. And the first one to understand it was Ligia Clark, the Brazilian artist, who in 63 made a work called Caminando, which is about you know, things where you cut in paper and do things and then the object becomes an artwork. And what is the art in the artwork? It's in the interaction and not in the object, not in the relational object. Which is something very strange because, you know, paintings used to be very expensive and now you have interactive artworks which are sometimes very expensive to make, as in huge interactive installations, as from uh, as from robotic research that I mentioned, or from Psycho Mikami, or from any of the other great electronic artists that we know. 
But still, it is not about the object and the installation. It is about the relationship that is created between the object and the spectator or the participant and how they change each other during the course. Now, this is one form of interactive art that works with objects because there are forms of interactive art that work with cursors. Like gaming is basically, you know, entirely cursor-based interactive action, even though the cursor takes on very interesting forms, as in avatars or other forms, right? And then there's uh, the what you might call the situation-based interactive art, which is, you know, working with groups in the city, doing things in the public space, which is also very interactive art. You know, the inter there is no really interesting object being made. It's just you know, the communication and the interaction that makes the work. Which is also, uh, it also comes directly, I think, from uh, the kind of work that uh, Mondrian did. Now, I want to make one extra statement here. I'm not claiming in my book that, you know, modern interactive artists have studied Kandinsky and Clay and then came up with a new idea. No, they, they are all researchers and they are in the same field of research. You're either in the research field of the line, that is bringing time into the artwork, or you're in the research field of the relationship, either Mondrian or participation art, or whatever form of interactive art you're talking about, or you might be in another research field, the field, for example, that was opened up by Marcel Duchamp, who was the first one who, as an artist, stopped making paintings and stopped making sculptures and yet remained an artist, which was a fundamental breakthrough in the 20th century, early 20th century, because it showed that you can make art without making paintings or sculptures. What exactly you do then is another question, but anyway, right? So there are all these different lines coming together in current interactive art, which has lots of forms, but what they have in common is that it is about the interaction, it's about the agency that the work allows, both for the participant and for the work itself. It can, you can change it and you can be changed by it and vice versa.